Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. So uh, in today's video, we are going to look at the atomic structure and spectra. And if this is the first time you are coming, please subscribe and join the YouTube community. So introduction, atomic structure is the arrangement of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom. Of course, you know that the atoms, we have an atoms, which is circular. And of course, in the center, we have nucleus. And in the nucleus, we have two fundamental particles, which is protons. So protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of the atoms, while electrons are found on the shell. So of course, these are the three fundamental particles of an atom. So in the atomic structure, it is a structure that's trying to show the arrangement of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom. Then understanding atomic structure is fundamental to the study of chemistry and physics and the behavior of atoms influences chemical properties and the reactions. So there are actually a series of chemical reactions that are taking place, some in living organisms, some outside living organisms. And of course, these uh, reactions, it can be nuclear reaction, it can also be chemical reactions. So the behavior of the atoms is what actually influences the chemical properties and the actions of the atoms. So what determine the structure, oh sorry, what determine the, the actions of the atoms, what actually determine the behavior of an atoms depend on these three fundamental particles. Some reactions, some, some atoms undergo neutralization reactions, some undergo uh, addition reactions, some undergo redox reaction because of these properties, which is protons, neutrons, and electrons. So the properties of the atoms are determined by these three fundamental particles of the atoms. And in fact, these fundamental particles of the atoms is also what determine whether an atom is a nuclear element or not. So the basic concept of atoms, so atoms cons actually consist of a nucleus that made up of protons and neutrons. So in the nucleus of the atoms, as I mentioned earlier, we have protons and then we have neutrons. Of course, you can see clearly here, this is the nucleus. And of course, in the nucleus, we have neutrons in blue and we have electrons, sorry, we have protons in red. And of course, the electrons orbits, the nucleus is defined by energy levels or shells. So you see, this is an orbit. And of course, the orbit or the shells of the atoms contain an electrons. So the number of protons determine the atomic number and the identity of an element. So uh, of course, the proton number determine atomic number of an element. Let's say you have an element. Let's say we have element X. And this element X, let's say it has atomic number of 10. So it's usually written somewhere like this. So it means that since you have atomic number as 10, so this 10 means that the proton's number of the atom. So the proton's number is the same thing as the atomic number of an element. So if an element have a proton's number of 10, so it means that the element is having an atomic number of 10. So this proton's number is what determines the atomic number of the element as well as the identity of the element itself. So the nucleus. So the nucleus is a dense, which is a positively charged center of an atom. So it is dense, which is also a positively charged. And of course, the protons is what contribute the positively charge of the nucleus, while the neutrons add the mass without charge. So uh, the neutron, the neutrons, it doesn't have charge at all, but it actually adds to the mass of the element. So if you want to get the mass of the element, ladies and gentlemen, it's simple. So to get the mass of the element, we use a formula which says mass number is equal to proton plus neutron. So this is the mass number. So mass number is equal to proton plus neutron. And of course, it is the neutrons number and the protons number that determine the mass of the element. So if you want to get the mass of the element, you just add the protons number plus the neutrons number, and that will give you the mass number of the element. And of course, the stability of the nucleus is influenced by the ratio of protons to neutrons. So that is why if you want to know whether the element is stable, 
or it is not stable is actually for you to calculate the protons number and neutrons number. So protons neutrons number is what determines the stability of the element. So when you have an element with a neutrons to protons ratio greater than 1.5, it means that the nucleus of the element is not stable. And of course, if it is less than one, it is also not stable. So electrons and energy levels. So electrons are negatively charged particles that occupy electrons levels around the nucleus. So the electrons is actually a negatively charge which is found on the shell of the element. So uh, so they, they are which found on the shell of the atom. So each energy level can hold a specific number of electrons. Like for example, we have uh we, we have first energy level, second energy level, and third energy level. And of course, we know that by calculation, we can actually calculate the number of electrons that can be accommodated by each shell or by each orbital. And to do that, we use a formula which says we have 2n square, 2n square. And the n actually, uh, the n reflects the number of shell. So if the shell is one, so let's say if we have our n equals to two, so if n is equal to two, it's simple to calculate the maximum number of electrons in the second shell. So it means that when n is two, it means that we have second shell. So we have k shell, we have l shell. So l shell is the first shell, k shell is the first shell, while l shell is the second shell. So it means that when it is the second shell, it means that the n is two. So you can calculate by saying two into two square, and this will give us, so two times two square will give us four, and two times two is going to give us eight. So that is why here we have a maximum of eight electrons. So each energy level can hold a specific number of electrons. And in the case of K shell, because K shell n is equal to one, so that is why we have two, into one square, so one square is one, so two times one is two. That is why we have elect we have two electrons here. So energy can move between energy levels by absorbing or emitting energy. So therefore electrons of the atom can move from one energy level to another, or can move from one shell to another based on, by, by either absorbing or emitting energy. So when energy is emitted or energy is absorbed, electrons can move from one shell another so now the next thing that we are going to look at is quantum mechanics in atomic structure so quantum mechanics is trying to describe the behavior of particles at the atomic level like for example each electron exhibits both wave-like and particle like properties of course this is actually the duality nature of electrons uh, some scientists are saying that electrons is a wave and then some scientists are saying that electron is a particle. So therefore, in conclusion, according to the uh, scientists, that electrons have duality in nature. It have both wave-like properties and a particle-like property. So it has both the properties of wave and the properties of particle. So the uncertainty principle states that we cannot precisely know both the position and the momentum of an electron. Yes, according to his back of uncertainty principle is a law which says that actually, uh, let's see, as we said, we have an atom. So in the atoms, we have nucleus, which is at the center, and then we have electrons. So according to his back of uncertainty principle, he said that we cannot precisely know both the position and the momentum of the electrons. So the momentum and the position of the electrons cannot actually be determined at the same time, it cannot be precisely know both the position and momentum of the electrons you can only determine one so if electrons is actually at one position then you cannot calculate momentum and if the electrons is moving around the nucleus then you cannot know the position but you can calculate the momentum so this is actually brief on the hism back of uncertainty principles so hism back of uncertainty principles that that to the Determine to determine the position and the momentum of an electron is not actually uh, be possible. So then the next thing is atomic models. So of course the atomic models has evolved from the Dalton's solid sphere, 
with the quantum mechanical model. And of course, we have Thompson proposed the plum pudding model, while Rutherford introduced the nuclear model. So you see, according to the first, the scientist called, uh, of course, John Dalton in the year 1807, he actually came up with, uh, with the solid spare model. That's the solid spare model. So of, of an atom. And then the next one is JJ Thompson, which actually come up with low, uh, plum wooden model. So a plum, a plum, uh, wooden model is a model that try to actually describe the properties of the protons and electrons, which is actually fully condensed in the, uh, in the atom. So then the plum pudding model did not actually describe the nucleus of the atom. We actually say that the electrons is sorry the atoms is made of or positive and negatively charged in the atom without describing the location or the precise location where the protons are. But of course while the Rutherford is the scientist that introduced the nuclear the in introduced the nuclear model where he actually tried to describe that we have a nucleus in the atoms or there is a nucleus in the atoms where both protons and neutrons are localized while electrons are described on the shell of the atom. So this is actually the model. So uh, Rutherford is the first scientist that's trying to uh, describe how the atoms, of course, uh, have both protons and electrons at different location in the atom. So the next one is Bohr's model, which introduced the quantized orbits for electrons, but was later refined by quantum mechanics. So we have Niels Bohr, which actually come up with uh, the, the uh, with planetary model. Then the next one is Stroginger which actually come out with quantum model. So these are the different atomic models. And of course, this is just a brief description. It tells you that, of course, the uh, solid sphere of the atom is described by John Dalton in the year 1807, followed by plum pudding model by J.J. Uh, Thomson after his discovery. Of course, J.J. Thomson is the scientist that discovered the electrons in the year 1986 so it's the first scientist that discovered electron and then the next one is of course the chat uh chadwick yes james chadwick in the year 1932 so it's the scientist that discovered the uh is the scientist that discovered the neutrons of the atom in the year 1932 so after the wooden model which described that the electrons and the protons uh, in the uh, in the solid sphere, without actually uh, describing whether in the atoms there is a nucleus or not. So then the next one is in a in 1911. So it's a scientist that was able to do to come up with a nuclear model that atom contain a nucleus that actually accommodate protons and neutron. Then of course the Niels Bohr, which come up with actually that. Electrons is actually uh, a particle that usually move around the nucleus. So that is actually this the, the, the contribution of Niels Bohr that the electrons are quantized by the orbits for electrons, but was later defined by the Erwin Schrodinger and quantum model. So as we are doing the class, we are going to actually look at how this scientist will actually make a great contribution here. So ladies and gentlemen, this is just a brief description of the atoms. So we are going to further discuss on in the next video. So follow me and join the YouTube community. We are going to actually continue in the next video.